uh, this morning in the same atmosphere where we are now. Let's just begin with an invitation for salvation. Because you can be in the building and not be into God. Amen. Amen. And the song was just saying, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. And so if you, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't surrendered your life to him, do that. You say, well, Pastor, I'm at church. I'm not talking about being in church. I'm talking about being in Jesus. I can be in the building and living my own life and have not surrendered my life to God. <coughs> and so I want to ask you to invite Jesus to come into your life. His arms are open. Turn your life over to him. And he would do some marvelous things with it. He would do better with your life than you could do yourself. What do I pray? You simply say, Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I accept you. Please come in. Please come in. I surrender my life to you. Whether you're doing that on Periscope or in the building, just pray that. Lift your, your, your voice, your hands, your arms up to God and say, Jesus, I turn my life over to you. I surrender my life to you. Come in, take over my life. Cleanse me from all of my sins and my faults. I choose to follow you. I give my life to you. And what will God do? God will touch your life even now. You know what? Just as the devil can influence you and whisper things, the Holy Spirit is available to influence you. To give you ideas and insights and wisdom, things to do. He will influence you to talk to God, to pray, to trust Him. And I'm believing that you're going to do the same thing today as you turn your life over to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Give our lives to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And allow him to guide and direct you. So if you, you're making that decision on Periscope, would you just indicate it by typing there? If you're making it in the building, let's talk. Let me help you make the next steps. Amen. Amen. Let me lead you into a, a, a greater awareness of what it means to follow God. Amen? Amen. Nothing but good things are up ahead for you. He's going to help you with everything you're going through in life. He certainly will do that. Do you have an outline for today? An outline for today? Thank you to our band and, and worship. Thank you so much for what you shared. Uh, on Periscope, you can go to the website today, SOL Fellowship. Go to solfellowship.com and go to the notes page and you'll be able to pick up the notes uh, from today. Um, and we're going to walk through that by the grace of God. I'm so excited about what to share with you today. And uh, hopefully everybody has an outline and you're ready to go to work today. Man, can you see the title of today's message? This is pretty strong. This is something the Lord gave me as I was working through this. And uh, he's placed it on my heart. And this page is not coming to you just from me writing it down. We worshiped over this. We prayed over this and believed God for your victory. And so I'm expecting a miracle today. I'm expecting to see the miracle working power active in your life today. I'm expecting that today. Amen. I'm looking for a miracle. They had a song that went like that. Everybody, in, okay, everybody has an outline. Amen. And it says, how to write your prescription for what? Miracles. miracles. Anybody need a miracle from God? Amen. Amen. I'm going to show you today how to write your prescription for miracles today. Let's begin with the first scripture. A periscope, if you go to the website, solfellowship.com, and click on the note, notes page, uh, you'll be able to pull up today's notes. Uh, YouTube, when, when it's on YouTube, the notes may not be there, but you can follow along with scripture as well. Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, beginning with verse 40 and 41. You have it? What are we focusing on? How to do what? Right? Yes. Anybody need a miracle today? Yes. Amen. Amen. You're going to go there with me today. You may not understand it. Your spirit man is going to understand it. So follow through with what is being said. Mark chapter 1. 
verses 40 and 41. What does it say? A man with leprosy came. And what did he do? He knelt down in front of Jesus, begging. So I want you to underline that word, a circle. He knelt down in front of Jesus, and he was what? Begging to be healed. Anybody have done any begging? He was begging to be healed. And what did the man say? He said, if you are willing, you can do what? Heal. Heal me and make me clean. Now, I want you to circle that word if as well. So the man was begging, and also the man said what? If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Verse 41, move with compassion. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappear disappeared, and the man was what? Healed. Now, what are we talking about today? How to do what? Right. Write your own prescription for what? Miracles. Okay, you ready? Here we go. We're going to jump into it. What? Look at me, y'all. What was the thing stopping or allowing this man to be healed? Look at the text. What does it say? What was the thing stopping? What, what, what are the verbal and mental restrictions that the man put in the way in order to receive his healing? He said, right, in his mind, you follow me? You got it there. In his mind, he said, I will only be healed only if Jesus was willing to heal him. Is that right? Yeah. He said, so, so he, has, he had put in his own mind his own prescription for healing. You follow? Because the man said, if Jesus is willing, then I'm going to be healed, Right? That's what he said. He had that in his mind. So the man following is saying, I will only be healed yeah. if I can hear Jesus say that he's willing to heal me. And then only then can I receive healing. Now, based on his own rules, right? His own prescription, because he's writing this, right? right. The man is the one saying, if. Jesus is not saying that, right? So he's writing his rules, stay with me. The man, the Bible said, found Jesus, he knelt down, and he started begging to be healed. Isn't that what the Bible said? Yeah. Right? So the man was begging, and what was in his mind? He had his prescription. If I beg him, and he lets me know that he's willing to heal me, what's going to happen? Uh, I'm going to go away with a miracle, right? Now, let me ask you, was all of this drama necessary? Huh? No. Come on, come on. Be honest. Be honest. Was all of the drama necessary? Yes or no? What you know about Jesus was the drama necessary? No. No. So why all that drama in your life? Right. Oh, y'all don't want to say amen. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to say amen early. I'm going to be amen. free in here in Jesus' name, right? Amen. Is begging required to be healed? No. Are you required to beg? No. No? Come on, please hear me. <laughs> you ready for my next statement? Yes. Yeah. And I put it, thank you, <laughs> thank you, little brother. I put a star by it in my notes because this is going to be strong. Are you ready for it? Come on. You just said begging is not required to be healed. In my notes, I wrote it down with a star by it. Begging may be necessary for you to be healed because Begging may be the qualification you put on your miracle prescription. You, you, you may write it out in your mind that God is not going to help me unless I beg him, even though you just said it's not required. So it's possible for me to have something in my mind that's not required, that I know is not required, but I don't believe it's not required, so I don't act as if it's not required. Right. Oh, they get quiet in here, Periscope. Can you all just put amen on the screen? Because they get quiet in here. Amen. See, it, it, it's necessary. The man, did the man write his prescription? Yeah. He said, did, didn't the man do this? Yeah. Jesus didn't walk up to him to heal him. The man, oh, let me kneel down because in my mind, if he's willing, and what am I going to do to get him to be willing? Oh, 
Are you ready? So some people will not receive healing unless they beg for it. And while they're begging, somebody else will just walk up and ask for it and receive it and go on about their business. Amen? But for you, you must beg and you must beg and you must beg and you must beg until you feel you begged enough, right? Until you, be, you feel that you begged enough to qualify to receive a miracle. And I know you get mad with me because, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm not a beggar. Well, I got a couple of more scriptures. I'm going to find you today. <laughs> I'm just getting started. But can we agree that the man wrote the prescription? Yes. Can we agree that the man said, if you're willing? Right. Yeah. And Jesus said, I am willing. Huh? Are you there? Amen. Think about begging somebody for something. I remember, and I told you this story before, when I was a little boy, we were at Disneyland years ago, so based on my age, that's like 40, 50 years ago, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, yonder, way back then, yeah, years ago, right? And we were there, and they used to have um, a little toy guns and all that, you know, people don't want to sell you little toy guns now and all that, but little soldier men, you know, for, for Christmas, I would want to get a little soldier outfit, right? Uh, Y'all remember the little cowboy outfit? You remember that? Had the little cowboys with the little guns and stuff, you know? Pearl handle. Annie Oakley. Annie Oakley, that's right. Little cowgirl boots. You remember that? They had the little skirts and stuff, and right? So we were at Disneyland, and, and they had the little military uniforms. They had a Union military uniform, and they had a Confederate military uniform, right? And I'm a little kid, you know, back in the day, I liked the hat. You know, I, I did. I liked the little gray hat. I didn't like the blue one. And so I wanted, I didn't know anything about the Confederate Army. I was a little kid, right? And so I, I remember begging my uncle who had taken us there, you know, and remember back in the day, people used to carry wads of cash. You all, you all, we don't do that anymore, but they used to carry a wad. You know what I'm talking about? That's what they call it, sir. You know, I knew he had the money. And so I begged my uncle to buy me that hat. And he offered me to buy me other stuff, but money was not the problem. The hat was the problem. I didn't know it, right? And so I kept begging my uncle, please buy me this hat. No, he wouldn't buy me. Eventually, hear me now, eventually I started getting angry with my uncle for not buying me this hat, trying to buy me something else, right? Just as people get mad with God and they get angry with God because God, how could you be so mean and so heartless and so cruel that I have to beg you for a miracle and you don't release it. I know y'all don't want to say amen. <laughs> but let me ask you, if you love me and I'm a part of your family and I go into your house and you're having dinner, will I have to beg you for food? But if I have in my mind that God is holding my miracle back until I beg him for it, eventually I'm going to end up angry with God. See, the only way my mother wouldn't feed me, are y'all still in the room? Yes. The only way my mother wouldn't feed me if feeding me would be bad for me. You know what I'm saying? There might be something going on. Kids, we were little, we used to love to have tonsillitis. Right? Because you get a lot of ice cream, right? <laughs> Your kids, oh, got down to like you get to get all this ice cream, right? But the, let's say I had a problem and they couldn't feed me. I'm going to have surgery or something. They can't feed me the night before. I can be complaining, mama's not going to feed me, right? Because it would hurt me. Let me ask you. Internally, think about it. What do you think? When you come to God for your miracle, do you feel that God needs to keep you sick and broke in order to keep you humble and serving him? Because no, no. I heard a lot of people say, oh man, if I had all this, some people wouldn't even come to church if they had all the money that they wanted. They only come to church when they're broke. So in their mind, they start thinking that God wants to keep them broke because when they're broke, they come to church. But God doesn't work like that. Maybe, maybe God is keeping you sick so you won't get the big head. Maybe God is keeping you sick so you stay on your knees and pray because when you were well, you didn't pray. Internally, what do you feel when it comes to us talking about you being healed? 
Because there are things that you can think that will block your miracle and block you from releasing your faith. At least the man understood. He said, man, if Jesus gives me a yes, I'm healed. If he's willing, I got it. At least he understood his restriction, right? I only beg for things that I believe I cannot have naturally. My begging is designed to move you to give me what you don't plan to give me. So if I'm begging God for my miracle, my plan in mind and my thought in mind is that God is not going to heal me. I got to beg him to do it because he wasn't planning on doing it. Are you still there? Anybody need prosperity as a miracle? Anybody need healing in your body? So what goes through your mind? In the story, look at it again. What was Jesus' response? Let me hurry up and get this down. What was Jesus' response in the story? What did the Bible say? Jesus was what? He was what? Moved with what? Compassion. Compassion. One translation, Sarah said he was in, in, indignant. That's one translation. But he's moved with compassion. What is compassion? Compassion is a compound word meaning with passion to suffer the compassionate one you are suffering with the one who suffers right. are you getting that right. so compassion is a sympathetic awareness of somebody else's distress you are not in trouble but you feel that trouble and you want to do something about it it's not compassion unless you want to do something about it right so the ambulance drives by your house and you feel that, oh, I feel that what's going on with them. But compassion is when I want to do something to help them as well. You got it? Amen. I feel your pain and I want to help you with your pain. Your passion and I got a strong desire. So what is Jesus, listen, what is Jesus feeling today in your body while you are being sick? And while you're struggling with prosperity, what is Jesus feeling about your situation? Huh? Does he have compassion for you? Or is he angry with you? I'm talking, go through your head and see what pops up in your head. Because what pops up is what you write on your prescription. What is Jesus feeling? Man, does, does Jesus feel what I'm going through and want to solve it? That's compassion. Are you getting that? Come on, yes or no if you got it. Yes. Okay, look at the next one. Let's move on rapidly. Uh, number two, Matthew chapter 8. Stay with me, Periscope, because I'm not sure anybody understands me in here, but <laughs> stay with me. Matthew chapter 8, are you there? Amen. Look at this. Come on. What does he say? Lord, what, my what? My young servant lies in bed, paralyzed, in terrible pain. And what does Jesus say? I will come and heal him. Verse number eight. But the officer said, what? Lord, I am not worthy. Right, to have you come into my home. And then he wrote out his prescription. What is his prescription? Just say, Just say a word from what? From where you don't even have to leave. Just say a word and my servant will be healed. Do you see that? Amen. What was the first guy's prescription? What did he say? I will only be healed what? If. if. The second guy, he didn't ask if. It wasn't even a question. All you got to do is say it. And my servant, are you seeing that? You can write your prescription for your miracle. Man, you all are not getting that. What was the mental restriction? What was his restriction for receiving his miracle? Yeah, he, he, the only restriction I have, all you got to do is say it. And I'm good. The other guy, my restriction, my uh, restriction is if you are willing. Are you ready? Amen. Can you take a word from God and that word be enough for your miracle and you don't need anything else? Amen. Mm, come on, be honest with me, y'all. No. Because I'm talking to some sick folk. Amen. Amen. Come on, be honest with me. I, I, listen. Listen, it's in my notes here too. <laughs> Just turn the page. Can I read it to you what it says? Amen. I know you may be saying, I didn't see you here, but I saw you here. I should only need a word from the Lord. But what we're talking about 
is what are you doing, not what you should be doing. So what are you actually doing when it comes time for your miracle? Not what you should. We all know what we should be doing. Amen. We all know that. But what are we doing? Are you all there? Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Let your faith go up higher. Let's go to the next one. Next one. Are you ready? Amen. I'm going to keep going at this. I can go all through the Bible and show you this. But we're just going to hit these few and then stop. Here's another miracle. Are you ready? Then, Mark chapter 5, I'm sorry, Periscope, Mark chapter 5, somebody write it down for me, for you guys, Mark 5, 22 to 42, and I skipped out um, a bunch of other verses, but read the entire passage. Then a leader of the synagogue, whose name was Jairus, he arrived, and are you there? Amen. When he saw Jesus, what did he do? He fell, he fell at his feet. Did we know another guy who did that? Yeah, yeah the first guy fell at his feet, right? Amen. Fell at his feet. And then what did he do? Verse 23. Pleading fervently with him. Now watch his prescription. He's going to write it out. My daughter is what? Dying, he said. So here's the prescription. Jesus, I need you to what? Please come, right? And lay your hands on her and heal her so she, she, she can live. Do you see that? And what did Jesus do in verse number 24? Jesus went with him. Man, was he writing a prescription? Yes. Okay, what, what, listen, what are the verbal and mental restrictions that the man put on his miracle? Jesus had to come to his house. You actually, Jesus, you actually got to come to my house. You can't go to my neighbor's house. You can't stay here where you are. Isn't that what he said? And he said, and when you get there, you can't just go in the house. You got to put your, you can't have one of your disciples put your hand on it. You got to do it. Isn't that what he's saying? Amen. And he said, and then after that, you can heal her. Isn't that what he said? Yes. Come on, read it. He said, please come, lay hands on her, heal her, <laughs> so she can live. You got it? Amen. And what was Jesus' reaction? The Bible said Jesus went with him. Why? Because Jesus is reacting to your faith prescription. Oh, are you all getting that now? No, you're not. You're not getting it. Nobody's there. I, I got it. I just wrote a prescription here when I was there worshiping. The Lord said, write a prescription as to what you want me to do today. And I said, Lord, I'm going to write a prescription that when I step up here, I'm going to feel the anointing and the power of God and people are going to be set free. That's the prescription I wrote. I wrote up here and now you can be healed in your body and in your finances in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I wrote it. Amen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, do you see that each person wrote their prescription? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, yeah. You see it. It's right there. So let's pray. Lord, help me write my prescription for my miracle because I need a miracle today. Can you pray that? Lord, do what? Help, help me. Do what? Write. write whose prescription? My, my prescription because... I need a miracle today. And what I need from God may be totally different than what my neighbor needs. So my prescription might be a little different. Are you getting that? The other guy, I'm not going to believe until I hear you say that you are willing. Another one say, I'm not going to let it happen until I get a word. Another one say, in Jesus, you got to come in the house. <laughs> you got to lay hands on her and then the miracle happened. Last one, are you ready? Okay, last one. Mark chapter 4. Stay with me. Periscope, we're almost done. A woman in the crowd. Do you see this one? Mark chapter 5, rather. A woman in the crowd. Hey, hey, you, you guys got some time? Read Mark chapter 5. Do you know there's a bunch of miracles happening? And while, listen, listen, while the one guy put the prescription on Jesus that said, Jesus, you got to leave where you are, come all the way to my house, lay hands on my daughter before she get here, another woman had a different prescription. She snuck up and got a miracle. We're going to see her sneak in. Look at this. A woman was in the same crowd. Do you see that? And she had suffered how long? 12 years. 12 years with what kind of bleeding? Constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from how many doctors? Yeah. Many doctors. And over the years, what happened? She had, she had spent what? Everything. So now she is sick and she broke. Anybody? 
Anybody here sick and broke? They don't want to testify on Periscope, but there's some broke, sick folk up in here. Amen. Amen. And I'm not just saying it because I'm in spirit of life. In every place, there's some broke, sick people. Amen. And you need to understand you're broke and you're sick. And you need to write a miracle. I'm just looking at the clock so you won't be offended. But if you are, shame on you because I'm trying to help you. Amen. 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 You are sick and you need a miracle from God. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. And so over the years, she spent everything and she had gotten no better. In fact, what happened? She had gotten worse. 27. Watch this. When she heard about Jesus, right? So she came up behind him. And what did she do? She touched his robe for what? Watch her prescription. For she. She thought to. Come on, are you all there? She's writing her prescription. She did what? Men. So there are other people in the crowd who were thinking differently. But she thought to herself. And what did she think? If I can just do what? Touch his robe, I will be healed, right? And of course, Jesus, she was healed. Now, did she have to touch the robe to be healed? No. The other guy said, Jesus, just speak the word. Did Jesus have to touch her? No. But she, based on where her faith was, that was the best she could do. Amen. Are you understanding that? Amen. Did Jesus respond to every person at their level of faith, yes or no? Yes. So if you need him to come to your house and lay hands on you, guess what? That's what Jesus is going to do. But while you got Jesus on hold, waiting to walk to your house, somebody else will write a faith prescription and run in and just snatch a miracle while you got Jesus on hold, walking to your house to give you a miracle. Are you getting that? Amen. Some of us say the word, people. Some of us, I got to feel something, people. Anybody know about that? I don't, I don't feel that I'm healed until I feel something move to my, I got to feel some electricity go through my body and all of that kind of stuff. And if I feel electricity or if somebody touch me and I fall out, then I've been healed, right? Some people got that. Any way you got it, just follow the instructions that work for you. What will it take for you to receive a miracle today? Come on. Oh, I dare you to go there. What will it take? And man, if the pastor jumps over the pulpit and runs down to him and says, God, you are healed, will, will that do it? Some of you say, oh, I'm healed. And jump right into your miracle. Others of you would jump up and say, I didn't feel anything. I, I need to jump a little higher and feel something while I'm jumping. And if I don't feel anything while I'm jumping, then I don't have a miracle. Where in the Bible did it say you got to feel it first? Where in the Bible? So in your mind, you are writing your own miracle. And can I tell you what the Lord also told me? Some of us are writing the miracle for failure. We keep failing over and over again because in our mind, we keep going in the wrong direction. I want a miracle from God today, and I'm going to write my own miracle and thank God for it. And according to the word, he's going to show up and give it to me. I wish I had somebody going there with me today. <sighs> We're going to stop and work this through because there's some, <laughs> there's some poor sick folk in this house. <laughs> and they need a miracle. Amen. 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 Periscope, if you can't go there with me, we're going to get into groups and we're going to work through this. Which story do you most identify with? We went through different scriptures and so which one do you most identify with? And then I'm going to ask you to write a miracle prescription that will allow you to release your faith to receive your healing and or prosperity. I want you to write out what you need and or write out what your prayer partner needs. Now, by the way, what I may need for my miracle may be different from yours, you know? What you need. But anybody here determined to be healed? Are you ready to go home and sick as you were when you came in? Huh? Are you determined? How determined are you for it? Huh? You're determined. Okay, so let's, let's do it. Periscope, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Love you. Go to our website. Uh, stay with us. Thank you for your financial contributions. You're a blessing to this ministry. And then let me know. Right? Let me know when you receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.